In this video, I'll show you how to remove patterns when tiling textures on large surfaces. Ooh, what's up guys, it's Dan here from ArcVis Champ, the best place to learn the ArcVis bits. Let's dive right into the lesson. Okay, so to actually understand the problem, let's talk about how tiling actually works. So in here I have a simple plane, just 3x3 three three meters with a simple grass texture on it. For now the texture is tiled only once. If we take a look at the texture itself, we can see that there is no extra tiling to it. Now let's say I want to make this plane much larger but keeping the texture at the same size. So I will first add a UVW map. We're gonna keep it as 3x3 three three. and now we can increase the size of the plane and as you can see the texture keeps styling over and over and keeping the same size. Now notice that I'm using a seamless texture which means that you cannot see the seams every time the texture is tiled either to the right or to the top and bottom. If for example I add a... this is the same texture but it's not seamless, you can obviously see the transition between one tile to another. So let's get back to our seamless texture. Okay, so for now everything seems to be working okay, but what happens if we start and in increase the size of the plane much further? You can kind of notice the problem I am talking about. The pattern of the texture becomes very visible on such a large surface. If let's say we... let's make it 9 meters by 9 meters. Let's add some segments. So now it's very clear that each tile is actually the same texture repeating itself over and over. Now to deal with that, we actually need to make each tile somehow unique from each other. We need to have some difference in the orientation, maybe the size, the scale, in order to make it less visible that it's actually the same texture. Now luckily there is a very simple, straightforward way to do it by using the UVW randomizer. Let's go over to the slate material just so you can see it and understand it much better. And now let's add UVW randomizer. I'm gonna plug the texture and add it to the material. In here we actually have all the options to randomize the UV offset, which is actually here. This is the U offset, V offset. We can random the rotation and we can random the scale. Now just make sure you tick the randomize each tile in order for this to work. And now we can actually start to add some values. And as you can see, you're not going to see anything in the viewport. So we need to start the interactive render. Okay, now just before that, I want to make things a bit simpler. Let's change the texture to a basic logo. Now things will be much easier to understand. We need to make sure that the randomize each tile option is on. And in order to make it work properly, we actually can't use the UVW map from here can turn this off and we need to control the number of tiles from this parameter. So if we put two, we can see we have two tiles for the U and the V value. So let's make three. We're gonna keep the blending at zero for now and let's start and add randomization to the U offset. Now you can see that each tile has a different U value. Let's do the same for the V offset and we can add a random rotation. Let's do a full 360 and we can even change the scale let's say from 100. If I lower the parameters we actually making the the scale bigger so from 100 to I don't know the value here but it's gonna be bigger 
so now we can clearly see that each tile has a unique UV value, a unique rotation and a unique scale. If we add a blend value, we actually start to fade the edges of each tile and we can even increase the number of tiling as we need. So now let's change back to our uh, grass texture. And now we can clearly see that there is no pattern showing off whatsoever. Turn off the randomize each tile. This is the before. We can see the pattern ver very clearly. And this is the after. Now what's great about it is that you can use actually very high resolution image that you can go inside and see all the juicy details and even if we are watching it from let's say far away you can't see any repetition whatsoever this is very important when we want to produce realistic results to complete the material we obviously need to add a bump displacement a gloss map so all we need to do is to just copy the same uvw randomize and just add it to the different maps as a bonus i want to show you how you can achieve the same effect on a different kind of texture like floor tiles okay so we're gonna find a nice tile material or a tile texture Let's go to Texture Heaven. I'm gonna look for. Let's see. Let's go to Floors. And I'm gonna go with this Floor Tiles. I'm just gonna download the Diffuse map for now. 4K. I'm gonna add a new Corona UV Randomize. Let's plug the tile texture and plug it to the diffuse. Let's set the plane for now for 9x9. Nine nine. Go to the randomize map and increase the tiling. Let's check the randomize each tile. I'm gonna reduce the blending to zero because actually we don't want any blending here. We want crisp line between each tile. Now with this kind of texture where we have a grid and a specific orientation, we need to somehow confine the randomized values. So let's start with the U and V offset. If for now I raise the U offset, the lines of the tiles are not going to be aligned because it's quite random. To fix that, we're gonna use the step parameter. Now let's bring back the number of tile to one. Now we can see we have three tiles for each direction. With the step parameter, we can actually, we can tell the texture to move in specific steps. If for example, I enter 1.5, that means that the U offset will only move in half of the texture size. For example, if I start and raise, nothing will happen until I reach half. The texture will move only by half of its size. If I go up, it will jump again when I get to one. And since it moved by another half, we are actually at the same position where we started. So if I want to have the offset only one tile at a time, I mean one floor tile at a time, we need to have steps by thirds. So if I enter here point 33 which is a third now it's gonna jump each third of the tile let's do the same for the v offset and let's raise it up until one now if we increase the number of tiles let's do three let's turn the randomize off this is the default tiling and now after we've randomized the U and V, we get this result. Next up, let's change the rotation. Just as before, if I just increase the value, it's just gonna rotate freely. What we need to do is to add a, a step for the rotation. So obviously we need to add a 90 degree step. And now it's only gonna rotate by 90 degrees each time. 
let's enter a full 360 and now we also have a unique rotation the scale I'm gonna leave as is because we want each floor tile to be the exact same size and also the blending let's keep it as maybe maybe 0.1 or even 0 it should be fine so as you can see we can increase the size of the tiling and you don't see any repetition whatsoever and if we zoom in we can have all the fine details on a very high resolution image so again this is a very powerful way to break down any texture and any repetition and achieving a very realistic result and again once you've done with the tweaking of the randomized map you can copy it for the glossiness bump and displacement and even save it for later use let me know in the comments below if you like this video, if you want to see more like it, or if you have any other topics you want me to make videos about, I'll be happy to know about it. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.